Welcome back, uh, fellow Aquanauts, uh, to another uh, Wolfie's Base Building 101 in Subnautica. Uh, today's uh, topic is power and oxygen. So, as I as I mentioned in uh, earlier episodes, uh, when you build a base uh, piece and establish a new base. So this one's far enough away from that one. Power this is restored. its own Inquiry base. Systems online. Now you... Um, it can be just a single tube like this. This is technically a complete base as far as the game is concerned. If this was not in creative mode right now, I would have no air. Welcome aboard, Captain. Uh, it wouldn't be full of water, but uh, the lights wouldn't be on, and I wouldn't have oxygen in here, and you would eventually suffocate in here. Now, building a simple one tube and one hatch base um, doesn't seem very useful on the surface. However, it is. It's very useful, and it can be a excellent uh, panic uh, situation for you. Let's say you're really deep down. You've collected a, a, a lot of materials uh, in your inventory. I mean, you, a lot of things you don't want to go back and get again. And you realized, uh, yikes, I'm not going to make it to the surface. If you have your tool with you, your, your um, builder, your construction tool here, a habitat builder you can quickly throw down a single tube and a hatch provided you had the materials of course it was just a, uh, some titanium and a quartz and jump inside and as long as you weren't on a uh, hardcore that is <laughs> it just doesn't work in hardcore because if you die you die uh, game over uh, but anything other than hardcore if you're about to die suffocate running out of air uh, and there's no way in heck you're going to get uh, back to the surface or back to your sub. Uh, whip one of these uh, quick little bases together. Jump inside. And the minute you do, you jump inside, um, It the, the game saves whatever, whatever stuff you have in your inventory. So if you die, you'll respawn with uh, full air inside this base with all your stuff. And that'll give you a chance to, to get back to the surface. Um, without losing all your stuff. Anyway, um, back to the topic, sorry. Went down that rabbit hole. Um, under normal circumstances, if this was not creative, again, no power, no oxygen. So the first thing we want to do uh, when we build uh, a new base is throw down at least one solar panel. And that will supply oxygen to the entire base. I mean, it doesn't matter how big the base is, one single solar panel supplies oxygen to the base. As long as it has power. So, this is pretty much the bare minimum base you could possibly build. A hatch, a tube, and a solar panel. And if this was uh, not creative, this would now have mentioned that it was supplied with power and, and oxygen and whatnot. So let's look at a larger base setup. Uh, here I've placed, placed down just three solar panels. Generally, that's nowhere near uh, enough solar power to supply your, your base, especially if you're running a water filtration unit or you're doing a lot of fabrication uh, those things do use power if you've got a moon pool out here and you're charging uh, Cyclops I mean uh, not Cyclops um, um, uh, sea moth or uh, your prawn suit uh, batteries off of the base uh, it, these will quickly drain these only work or only um, charge during the day 
And then during the night, um, basically they have little batteries built into them uh, as far as the game mechanic goes. So they store um, power that way. And as you can see, uh, once I got rid of the tool, you can see daylight. It's beginning to charge. Each one of these stores 75 uh, units of power. Now, solar panels are um, charge. In this case, you, you can see I have 67% uh, sun, and that's because it's you know low in the sky. Uh, full day, these would these would get probably get 100% uh, here. These degrade. Uh, performance the deeper you make them so if you've got a base you know fairly close to the surface here I mean e even putting solar panels you know down at this at this depth is still going to get um, quite a bit of sunlight as you can see 59 percent and you know we're at 14 meters down so it, if you're shallower you know, then, then around 25 meters, you're all good for for solar. Um, it doesn't really make much difference um, anywhere from 25 to surface as far as the amount of power you're going to get. The, the difference is fairly insignificant. Uh, you still get 75 power at it no matter how deep you go. It's just going to charge more slowly. I mean, all the solar panels are going to give you 75 energy, no matter how deep they are. Once you get to around 200 meters, the charge rate is so insignificant on these things, you just don't even bother building them. Uh, it's, it's a waste of materials. Uh, they just won't get enough sunlight during the day, a single day, to charge them. So 200 meters is pretty much the cutoff uh, for a solar panel. Now one way, um, if you have it uh, scanned, you will find these power transmitters, uh, pieces of them, throughout the world. And when you scan them uh, with your scanner, you can um, get enough pieces of them, you'll be able to build them. So what you can do um, with these, they are a power transmission uh, system. So you could, like, if your base was really deep and you needed to get power to it, uh, you could build some things up on the surface. There we go. Up on the surface um, to build a a. Uh, panels on. You could find a shallow spot like I'm doing here. Uh, build a few um, panels. And with that power transmitter, you see these little blue lines. Oops, I got too far out of the water. See the, see the blue lines, how they're connecting these, to these power, these uh, solar panels? So you'll need to put uh, one within reasonable reasonable proximity um, to the solar panels um, so you can see there but there's a, there's the cutoff distance from it you'll put one down near the panels and you see it collects it's collecting all of the energy from the panels and even as far away as we are uh, from the base 130 meters plus uh, it will tra it tra it's now transmitting the power from these solar panels to the base. And I'll cover these uh, these power trans transmitters uh, a little more detail uh, later in the episode. So let's say you're you're deep enough where building something on the surface like I just did is fairly impractical. Uh, you could be in areas that simply doesn't have access to the surface. Your next option uh, for power is going to be the bioreactor. Uh, again, this is something that you're going to have to locate throughout the world, um, and there's and there's scattered all over the place. 
And it's fairly common. Uh, this one, the bioreactor is pre pretty easy uh, to find. Uh, basically, what it does is it takes any uh, biological material that you put in here. It could be uh, the mushrooms. It could be uh, leaf samples. It could be the pods. Um, mushrooms, fish. Uh, and, it, and it basically... Uh, processes that biological material into uh, power. And if I remember right, I think it stores 500. Yeah, 500 uh, when it's being used. So this will store 500 energy, uh, and the only way to charge it is to feed it biological materials. One of the uh, little tips that uh, I give people on, on these is you can actually stick a locker to these things like this and this can be a an easy easy place to store because it will only hold uh, so much material before you have like this storage area is a, is a 4x4 uh, square so it will only uh, store so many things in here before you have to put more things in it so basically you have to manually continually feed this thing so having a locker uh, stuck to the side of it that you can pre-populate and store uh, stuff to put in here at a later date uh, is really handy and that frees up you know the walls uh, for your other uses your other storage areas the next possible option for you uh, for power uh, is the nuclear reactor and again that's scannable pieces and that uh, also goes in these large multi-purpose rooms. And if you don't have the multi-purpose rooms, you cannot build the bioreactor, like is seen over there, nor this nuclear reactor. Uh, it, they will not build inside of uh, any of the smaller rooms, uh, such as the tubes and, and um, crosses and stuff. So you must have the uh, multi-purpose room to be able to build these. The other item that you will need uh, with the, with this nuclear reactor is a nuclear waste disposal unit. And of course that can uh, tuck down just about anywhere. Basically it's a trash can for the, the spent nuclear material that goes in here. And it only takes uh, nuclear material that you will find uh, in certain areas in the game. I don't happen to, ha happen to have any on me in this game. Uh, they last quite a long time uh, uh, in the nuclear reactor, so it's not really... It's, this is something you don't have to continually feed, but you do need specific material to feed this in the first place. So if you don't have um, any nuclear material, you, there's no sense in building these because it won't do you any good. And uh, it uh, stores 2,500 units in, of energy, and these are cumulative uh, for the base. So you know that 2,500 would add to that 500, giving me 3,000 plus all the solar panels as a cumulative pool for the entire base. And the last um, option, and. It's one that's uh, very handy uh, later in the game. Early in the game here, there's really only one place uh, that you can use these, and that's the thermal vent over there. Until you get deeper uh, down in the mushroom uh, cave is another place. Uh, the, these can be used, and um, that's... Let me get back to the tab here. And that's these thermal plants, and I'll cover those in a minute after I show you how to find that thermal vent over there. So we go back to the um, coral tube here, our favorite landmark, which is always in the same place. You go to the, the tube here, and you aim on your compass up there pretty much straight south, or you line up this coral tube and that chunk of um, 
fan up there. Uh, that will put you pretty much on course as well. So basically you just head off straight south. And you'll be going almost exactly 400 meters out. As you see, I've already got a beacon here. Trying to stay pointed south here. You'll come across a wreck here. Heading straight, straight south. And once you hit this wreck, Go right over the wreck, and then you look just off to the side over here, and you'll see this area here. This is a thermal vent. You will find these in a couple places in the game. You will find uh, the lava area uh, in the mushroom cave, uh, and I'll show you that later in this episode. You will also find it in a couple of other uh, biomes here uh, as well. You'll find a couple of these. Now, building these uh, is going to require some rare materials, specifically the aerogel. Um, so you're going to have to be uh, adventurous and have found a few things before you can even make the aerogel. And then once you make the aerogel, then you'll be able to fabricate um, these thermal plants. And the way they work is they... The, um, work on the on the heat differential in the surrounding and, and it, this, if I was in, not in creative I'd be dead about now um, so placing these is very hazardous um, so the hotter they are the hotter the water that's surrounding them the more um, power they generate they they all hold um, you know, 20, uh, 250 units of power. However, the um, rate at which they charge is based on the temperature of the water around them. And you'll see this uh, dial, or this gauge, which is, for me, seems a little backwards as far as colorization goes. Green means it's in hot water and red means it's not in hot water and I'll show you some of the ones that I purposely placed a little bit out of range of lava so in this case you'll see it's got a 78 degree C water temperature and the higher this bar the faster these charge so they're similar to the solar panels in that the more light they receive the faster they charge same here the more heat these receive the faster they charge but they still store the same amount of energy so I've as you can see I've placed uh, several of these around uh, the circumference and you can see this one's in the yellow so it's not going to be as efficient as supplying power as this one down here in the green And then as before, you see I have uh, placed one of the power transmitters. And it's collecting from these. And you see these are also up on the fringe. You see this one's 60 and it's well into the yellow. Placing these even further away. Let's see if I can find a level spot up here. Probably be in the red. No, no, I was still in there. It's kind of surprising. I thought I was far enough away on it. I'm pretty sure the water is cool enough here. So this one's down in the red, 36 degrees. So it's not going to charge very fast at all. So the hotter they, hotter you can get them the faster they charge, the more uh, power they supply. So. And then you uh, can ship the power back uh, to your base using uh, these power transmitters. Now, I, I mentioned I would uh, talk about these, and here they are. These transmit power one direction um, in the order that you place them. So we have the 
from source here. Then I placed this one. So the power is moving here up to this one. Then I placed another one off this direction. So the power is going this way. So if I had power collection here and then I built something over here, it wouldn't send power back that way, unfortunately. They're not bi-directional, they're unidirectional. They send power in only one direction. And they in they send it to you know from one um, of these to the other a very long distance. So let's head back to toward the base and let's plant the one. As you see, I'm watching that blue line at the bottom, that connector line, and I'm heading toward the base, which is where the Seamoth is over there, and that blue marker. See, I've traveled, whoop, there, there we go, we finally got out of range, so we'll have to come back a little bit, so we know we're pretty close in this area, so we know See, that blue line is there, and it's not there. So if we place it here, it won't connect. But if we place it here, it will connect. So we'll throw that down. So now we've got power from over there all the way over here. And we'll put the next one down. We'll probably be able to reach the base from here. Hopefully we'll be able to get across this gorge. Otherwise, I might put it there. Uh, ooh, yeah, we made it. We can easily reach the the base from here. Yeah, it'll each easily reach the base from here. All right, so we'll put it here. There we go. Oops, I for totally forgot about this base. Yikes! Should be coming that. Get rid of hatch. Get rid of tube. And now it'll reconnect to our main base. So it's going to connect to the nearest base. And in the situation we just had, it would only... All that all that power from all those um, heat units would go to that single tube. It would not be uh, heading up to our main base. As it is here. Now power, uh, as you can see, doesn't have actually have to physically connect to the base. As long as it's in the snap range, it will it will feed power to the whole base. You don't have to physically connect these solar panels to the buildings. So let's decon that, decon that. So now we have we don't have a physical connection between this platform and this tube. But, and it's impossible for me to show you because um, we're in creative, but this, the power from those uh, heat units that's coming up this line to this platform and these solar panels is actually supplying power to this base because this whole thing is considered a base and we, we don't actually have to connect wires to it um, to have the power there. And that was one of the things that uh, drove me nuts early when I was uh, first starting to play. So I didn't realize I, I was sticking you know solar panels on top of everything out here because I thought they actually had to physically be attached to the buildings to supply power. And that is absolutely not the case. As long as it's considered part of the same base, it gets the power. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay. To our other base over here.
Okay, um, so here you can see some of the possibility. So even even now, um, it's at 45 meters. Uh, these are only getting 64% sun, so you can start there. So you can see they're starting to taper off. Uh, so you can you can stick these things on virtually any part of the base, or you could put them on surrounding sand, rock. Uh, they'll even um, sit on top of the glass. So these things will stick to almost anything. They'll even go down here on the. the sand. Oops. So 53% down there. And these are 57%. So you're, st you're starting to see a, a bit of a taper there. You can stick them on top of moon pools. Uh, you can even stick them right on top of whatever the heck this thing is. They're very handy to, um, to add power to a base because they will stick to virtually anything. Head down the trench here. Even though this is completely underground, it is considered part of that other base because of this tube. It's actually connected to that other base. So all of those solar panels is are actually supplying uh, power uh, to this base down here. Efficiency greatly decreased. Weird. Yeah, they're not showing the blue lines. That's quite odd. Hmm. Must be a bug in the game. They were connected when I left the game last and before I uh, started this episode. So I loaded another another save. I was trying to find one that where I was deeper down, but I didn't have one handy. Alright. Oops. Excuse me. Planning on relying on the power distribution lines for finding the lava again. Yay. Ah, there they are. Okay, so we've got um, another lava vent down here. Now, in your Seamoth, if you look to over to the lower right, you will see a temperature gauge. You probably might have wondered why that's there because it doesn't really affect you uh, until it gets until the seamoth gets really hot. It's not going to take damage, but it will eventually take damage. But I use that for uh, helping to locate uh, the good hot spots uh, to put these. So you can see up here, you know, 28, 30, not not very warm. In fact, uh, this one should be in the red. Yep. Which means it's not going to supply hardly any power at all. 
here you have some 74s. These are going to be pretty happy. And here you've got um, what 88 to 90 ish. So these are these are pretty much almost full full power. These are going to charge very very rapidly. So you see how I'm using that that temperature gauge uh, in the Seamoth to let me know where where some of the best spots to put these are. As long as I can find a flat spot to, to put these. Here we're collecting the power. I'm kind of curious why it just stops here. It should connect to the next... bug. Uh, another one way down in the 30s, and like I said, it's in the red. And to me, I thought, I, I would have thought red would have meant it's nice and hot, and green it's not very, but I guess green is good and red is bad, as far as their logic goes. Weird. So, that's the basics on uh, power. Now, oxygen, there's a couple of extra items that we haven't really touched on yet, and I'll hit those briefly here. One thing that you can do in bases is you can um, have, say, external platforms, uh, places to uh, grow beds, to put grow beds, for example. And sometimes it's nice to have a an oxygen source outside, for example. Say we had uh, some. Oh, there it is. External grow bed. You know, we extra grow bed here, and we got some stuff growing down here. And you know, we're out here, you know, and we harvest things, but we're running out of oxygen all the time because we're taking up a lot of time out here. So that's what. Uh, these base attached air pumps are for and they can stick to pretty much any any piece of the base that you want to put it on and it doesn't matter um, if it's actually physically connected to any part of the base as long as it's like on a platform for example this would work so let's let's put it up here just for grins The next thing that we need off of it. Welcome aboard, Captain. We need to get us a fabricator down here. Okay, under deployables. Where are we? Where's my sword it was under? surface. A few of these pipes. You get five pipes for uh, a couple titanium. And they and they and they can extend pretty far. So now, so we have this this oxygen generator thing here. And we have these pipes now in our inventory that we just made. And I've queued one of those up, and you see it connects to that. 
snapping to it. And they can extend. And I didn't realize that at first when I when I was first playing. They extend they extend out pretty far. Um, they're not just that little short thing that you, know, you, you it initially st snaps to. You can extend these down uh, pretty darn far. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one uh, pretty short. So I, so I can show you how to connect multiple pipes. And the, the air is only going to bubble out the last one. So basically, we're going to come down here. And we're going to plop that last one out. And yeah, this using three pipes was kind of stupid. You could have done this in one. Uh, but I want to show you how, how they uh, connect together. So now you've got an oxygen supply here. And again, if this was not creative, uh, when we get near this, uh, we would be uh, filling up our tank that would normally be in the lower right down there. Uh, just as it refills from the bubbles from those coral up top. So we've got a way to now be out here collecting our shrooms or whatever we've got growing out here and if we get short of air boom like that it's also handy for uh, if you're going to be inside repeatedly going inside areas you can again lay down one of these oxygen generators somewhere Tubes. So let's say if we're going to be going in in this base a, a lot, looking for stuff or harvesting things or you know whatever, so we can run um, a pipe series down here. You see, I get as far as it will go. Attack the next one. far as that will go, and I'll take the next one. Next one. Let me get down in this entrance right here. And we're going to make a turn right here. Plant one there. So now we've got a oxygen supply up inside this base that we can always refill. And these are not single use. As you as you can see, I can recollect the pipe. You know, when we're done with them and and reuse them. This is actually a very good way to get down into this base before you manage to get the larger tanks. And I'll show you how to use those pipes. And that floating one, let's say you know, we're going to pretend we don't have this base. And since they only, um, need titanium to build. I mean, these are dirt cheap. Um, and since you can reuse them, and also the air pump only requires titanium, so this stuff is, uh, I believe, unlocked right at the beginning of the game. So you've got access to this already uh, the minute you start the game. Let's get sub. Welcome aboard, Captain. 
Oh. Okay, let's say, oops, let's say we don't have this base. And we wanted to get down into that mushroom area, but we obviously have the small air tanks and, you know, we'd never live. So that's when this bad boy comes in handy. So we deploy that, that's, that's that floating one, and it's going to float to the surface. And it requires no power, just runs on its own. And it works exactly like the one that we fabricate and stick to the base. And the, the pipes uh, stick to it. really cool thing with this is since this auction is coming out this end while we're coming down we're we're constantly staying um, filled up with oxygen from the surface as we're extending these pipes uh, we're constantly refilling our oxygen as we go so it's very handy like I said they're dirt cheap So if you're having trouble uh, reaching an area before you found the the big tanks, well, here's your answer. And they don't seem to get in the way of the, um, the subs either, so that's 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 nice. They they don't seem to be blocking, as far as passing 100 meters, oxygen efficiency decreased. So even though we're sneaking these down the same hall. We'll still be able to uh, come down here with a sub without any problem. And we're back down to our pace again. See, I'm just sneaking down to until it won't extend anymore to get the maximum depth out of each pipe. And again, that uh, the one floating on the surface, uh, that ox oxygen pump is also retrievable. So again, reusable. So once you're done with it here and you need it somewhere else, we've just come down. 200 meters from the surface, we would have not had any issue staying uh, full of oxygen on the way down. We can do our exploration of the base. We have an oxygen supply here. Now we can, uh, one little neat little thing. Come back. Here's a really cool thing. We can branch it out. So we can come back, uh, e even even from the one that was uh, mounted on the base here. Uh, we can fork out, uh, branch off the pipes, and we can have multiple uh, ox oxygen outlets if we need to. 
we have one there and one over, one over here uh, coming from the same oxygen source. So yes, you can branch them out and feed a, a very large area. If you've got a couple of task areas, work areas, you can branch off. You don't have to uh, make the generators uh, one for each area. Cool. All right, well, that's the basics about the, um, the oxygen. As uh, long as a base has power, it's going to have oxygen in it. We have uh, base-mounted oxygen generators, which are used uh, are uh, made with the fabricator tool. We have floating deployable ones, which are made in the fabricator, uh, the 3D printer, whatever you want to call it, inside the base as are the pipes here. Um, I've covered the use of the various power sources, the, the solar panels. Um, and again, uh, let me see if I can get a flat surface because we're pretty down here. See if there's a flat surface somewhere this thing will stick to. Yeah, there we go. So here at 142 meters, we're only getting 16% power out of this thing. So at this depth, I probably wouldn't even bother with them. Anyway, um, the other sources are the bioreactor, which you will have to uh, locate pieces of and scan to be able to, to manufacture. The nuclear reactor, which will require nuclear material to operate, and you will also have to find and scan the pieces. And I believe the base here is one of the areas that it's fairly common uh, for the nuclear reactor uh, parts to be at. So it's quite likely one one or two of the pieces is going to be at this base right here for you already. The thermal reactor, again going to need aerogel. Uh, so you're going to need I believe rubies um, for that, which ironically uh, typically occur around thermal reactor, uh, uh, thermal vents, uh, not up here, but in uh, other areas of the game. Let's see, if we can pick up that floating, and then we can reuse it somewhere else. All right, so that should be uh, should get you covered uh, for powering your bases, uh, getting oxygen to them, and also getting oxygen to areas you don't have a base in or uh, having an external area um, with some oxygen for a work area for harvesting things uh, that should pretty good, pretty much cover everything for you I appreciate the watch I uh, hope you uh, found this useful and uh, thank you for joining me